Hello, my name is Rhea Kilstead, and you are listening to the Primatech Files. Hey, Primatech peeps. Welcome back to the Primatech Files. This is Ricky, flying solo today. But I have another interview for you today, and it is with Miss Erica Kravid herself, <laughs> Rhea Kilstead. Hey, Rhea. Hello. How's it feel being um, having finished Heroes Reborn? You know, it's that funny thing of you kind of, you know, finish a job and, and you know, because of what we do, you, you move on to the next. And sometimes, sometimes you are, you are followed and traveled by with your cast, which is wonderful. Mm. Um, and sometimes you're not. Sometimes, you know, you finish a job and everybody packs up and goes their own way. But I have to say it's been one of the lovely things about her- Heroes is there's mm. still a giant group of us that still talk and see each other and oh awesome. and, you know it's 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 what we do you do a job yeah. and then you finish and you move on i think i saw um i don't know if if it's correct but i i believe you're going to be on once aren't you i am that's what i oh heard. nice yeah yeah really do you fun. get do you get to have your revenge against uh robbie k this time oh. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that funny I rob and i were both in los angeles and we literally had dinner last I don't remember what day it was. One day last weekend, mm. um, I had a bunch of the cast over for dinner, and Robbie said he was leaving the next morning to come up to Vancouver, and we just started laughing. I said, all right, well, I leave on Tuesday to go up to Vancouver. <laughs> um, and we did. We met down at the hotel bar together up here, which was great. But no, we don't have anything together on once. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, no, all of my stuff is with, is with Jennifer Morrison. Okay. Going to have to start catching up. Okay. <laughs> um, I will... Let's start off with, um, can you give us a little introduction to yourself for our fans? Um, I'm sure they know a lot, but, you know, why not? Um, Sure. I uh, live in Los Angeles. I am at the moment in Vancouver working and kind of go back and forth. I I worked for years. I took a chunk of time off to stay home and have kids and kind of came back to work and have been back at it for the last four or five years. That's a good vague general. <laughs> so um, before we, before we get into um, Heroes Reborn stuff, how much um, of the original Heroes had you seen beforehand? Not a lot, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, I had seen some of it in bits and pieces as it aired. I'm not much of a big, uh, I guess I am a big television watcher now, but kind of in the, in the more cable world and the more um, binge watching, yes. uh, <laughs> binge watching world. But I did sit down and watched uh, a huge chunk of it when this mm. was coming my way, so that I knew what world it was and you know the story and what we were continuing on or what you know if we were continuing anything on to figure yeah. out who was who. You know, mostly Jack because he yeah. was, you know, the main the main coming back with SHRG. Mm. But I did. I watched the whole first season and the second season and bits and pieces of the last season. Did um, did anyone give you any specific episodes telling, oh, you need to watch this one, you need to watch that one? No. At one point as we were going through, I think our episode 11 was called... Um, Send in the clones. Oh, maybe it was... Uh, all right, maybe it was... Company Woman. Yes, Company Woman. So I, I went back at that point and watched Company Man just to see if there was anything that I could pick up and reflect and you know sometimes it's nice to find a a little head nod towards something <laughs> but it was but the scripts were so different and the stories were so different that it didn't it didn't work that way it just ended mm. up more being you know that was the the backstory for for HRG and that ended up being Erica's backstory as well mm. did you have a, a favorite character from the original heroes prime universe from the original I I loved HRG I love yeah. what Jack did with HRG I love that HRG got to be you know, he was a fully rounded character, yeah. you know, bad and good and torn in it and mm. uh, morally complicated. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think that's always really interesting. Yeah, I like what they did with him in the um, in the new series as well, the way that they kind of, it's not that they rebooted him, but because he had his mind wiped, he was very different from the kind of original HRG we knew. And it was right. him getting back to that kind of badass that we knew but um you talked about your you kind of binge watch shows and stuff like that um i do it's terrible uh, <laughs> were you, uh, <laughs> are there any particular genres in particular like i'm just wondering because obviously heroes reborn is that kind of sci-fi superhero genre um did you no, watch i i have to say i tend not to be i i tend to not follow genres but characters and stories that okay. cult me 
I mean, would I say that in general I'm a, a superhero sci-fi watcher? No, I would. I'd say mm. that I was not actually. But but you know, it really is character. If something yeah. is you know really great, complicated, interesting, you know, character and story, I'm in. I'm you know, Mr. Robot has been my most recent and. Uh, and I have to say that, and I can't binge watch this because it really is only every week, but I'm absolutely obsessed with and hooked on American Crime. Uh, okay. Which is not the, uh, which is not the OJ one. Yeah, yeah, the other one. Yes. Which is true old school rep and the story, the stories are amazing. They're incredibly well directed and shot in such an unusual, non-traditional network television way and the acting is spectacular i mean i love them i'm I'm addicted Mm. let's get on to heroes reborn and the the role of erica what was it about erica that kind of piqued your interest well i love that you asked that like i had choices (laughs) 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 like they said you can play whatever part you'd like (laughs) which is unfortunately not how it works or at least not where i am in the Mm. in the um in the food chain but uh but really fun to think about playing somebody who who everybody at first glance is going to look at as being, you know, the baddie mm. and really be able to give her her reasons and her focuses and her. She's very clear about what and why and what she's mm. willing to bend. And, you know, it's fun to play a bad guy. Mm. You get all the best lines. <laughs> nobody's nobody's a bad guy. Right. You you mm. all come from it for just from just through your lens. Mm. I know. And I got some good and I got some good button lines, didn't I? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Could you recall um, anything about the audition process? Like um, what was the aside um, and kind of uh, sometimes people have just given us like the original name that they had for the character. So God, I don't remember what the original name was. Um, That's fun. But I do know I was given sides and it was really just a, it was it was a monologue, a, fil- a monologue scene where this character and I knew very little about her. They give you, you know, three, yeah, yeah. four, eight pages, whatever it was. I think it was four or six pages. And, uh, you know, cle- she was clearly a, you know, and then, and then as an actor, you go at it and you just make up hmm. what you think this comes from so that you can try to, you know, build up someone who's living and breathing. Hmm. And she was, uh, the, the sides were speaking to filming herself, like as if giving a speech, but then, huh? constantly editing herself kind of stopping and going okay wait a minute that didn't work let me try it again this way and and I couldn't go into the audition I don't remember if I was working or just so I did so I taped it at home Mm -hmm. so just took full advantage of that you know of playing and you know like like how you do a tape at home which is you know you work on it and you redo it and you but I just kind of left it all on the same thing so that was a blast and then sent it in and then I think I didn't hear for a while and then I think I did hear and they were doing something different or a bigger name or I don't even remember mm. you, you know, you try to develop a thick enough skin that you go, mm. okay, fine. I did the audition. Now I'm forgetting about it and moving on. Mm. And then I, I got a call one morning saying, can you be <laughs> at the studio this afternoon to do a diff- to, to do the scenes again with the casting director, put them on tape for kind of network and studio to see. And I thought, oh, fuck, really? <laughs> In how many hours? <laughs> I mean, I think I was, you know, in sweatpants on my way back from taking kids to school and Uh. shit. Okay, (laughs) yes, I can. I haven't looked at the scenes in weeks, but I managed to, you know, pull it together enough and went and did that. And and then I still think it took ages. And then I I got a phone call saying that I had the job. And, you know, you have those two parts of your brain that part of me was, you know, thrilled, super exciting and fun to get a great job. And then the other part, the practical work part going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have no idea who this character is. I have no <laughs> idea what the story is. Oh my God. And I start when? <laughs> so that's, you know, yeah. that's what I remember from the process. That's all right. I vaguely remember that you were kind of the last uh, main character to be cast. And I remember thinking, oh, this is a, uh, this is going to be interesting, especially with HRG around. And I was, we were, it, me and me and Lilith were like theory crafting what was going to happen. And it just went in a totally different way. And I loved it. But, um, one of the fun things is, I mean, as soon as kind of that happened, I got a call from Jack, hmm. uh, you know, right after I think he got told and announced because he and I had worked together the year before and played husband okay. and wife oh. on something. So I got this lovely call saying, all right, come <laughs> on back. Let's go. Which is really nice. Awesome. So uh, how much of the, the story were you kind of told beforehand or, or did, were you told in pieces as, as the writing process went on? 
I had a long talk with Tim Kring and James Middleton and Peter Elkoff, I think, were the three on the call, kind of saying, so here's what here's what we are thinking for Erica. Here's the world that we're thinking is, you know, these these very powerful tech people who have made their billions in the mm-hmm. in the tech world and who can kind of somehow skip the skip the political system that exists because mm-hmm. they've never existed within those confines and they are so successful that they're used to creating their own rules and dynamics. Mm-hmm. And rather than waiting for things to go through normal channels, they're just like, well, I have the money and I'm going to make it happen now <laughs> on my own. And, you know, as we are seeing with Donald Trump, for mm-hmm. example. So that's how they started talking to me about her. And in some ways, I think really the, the one of the biggest things we talked about is that is that there's a there's a wonderful, unapologetic sense and a very clear sense of what she thinks is right and wrong. And yeah. that in the grand picture of the world, somebody has to be willing to make sacrifices. Mm-hmm. And if none of the rest of you wimps out there are going to do it, <laughs> I will, which is a really interesting way to look at things. How long did it um, take them to tell you about um, her backstory? a long time I kept asking Mm -hmm. I just kept thinking that it you know I think it makes a difference to an audience to know where somebody's coming from because then it gives you an opportunity to love to hate them or to 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 to, to the the more human they are yeah the more complicated your feelings are about them Mm -hmm. and that's really fun as an audience member Mm. did you have your own theories as as to what led her to being the way she was before before you found out I, I did. They were very wrong, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I did. You know, you kind of make up your own stuff. And then as you get scripts, you go, oh, OK, all right. OK, well, that OK, <laughs> that OK, that works. I'll just adjust this. And <laughs> truth is, I guess it doesn't really matter what the answers are as long as you have answers mm. um, yeah. to fill in the blanks and the questions. Who did you draw inspiration from for the character of Erica? Well, I did a lot of kind of looking at the big, powerful women out there in the in the in the work world, I, I did pick up and read um, "Lean In," which is Sheryl Sandberg's book okay. about women in the mar- in the workplace. Mostly, you know, in truly the the kind of business, the official business workplace, um, which is a really fascinating book. But about women leaning in towards work and in towards drive, rather than out and away from, and the complications of kids and how you do it all and. And I started watching and thinking about Queen Elizabeth, (laughs) who was such a fierce and unapologetic uh, or seemed to be woman. I I looked at um, Alan Rickman, um, who who always played such fantastically full, complicated baddies. You know, and I'm I'm a I'm a political, you know, I I read and follow politics and Mm -hmm. news and sports. So I did a lot of newspaper reading of kind of the powerful CEOs out there. If mm. there was an article and there was something going on, I just kind of kept my ear down. Okay. You know, I think you stat, you know, some of that stuff sticks when you're working and some of it rolls right off of you and doesn't. And <laughs> you never know what the right thing is going to be. Did you have a, a favorite scene that you were a part of? And then um, also a favorite scene um, that you weren't a part of that you you'd like to bring up? Well, I loved, I mean, favorite scenes, I loved all the stuff I got to do with Eve. I thought yeah. uh, with Eve Harlow, I thought she and I have great kind of energy and chemistry together. Mm. And those were just fun to play. And to, I had uh, a fantastic day on set with, uh, with uh, Greg Grunberg and Eve one day, uh, yeah. which, you know, had moments where we were crying with laughter, mm. you know, tears rolling down our face can barely pull it together just because every <laughs> once in a while it happens. And those are always so fun. Mm. And Jack and Henry, I had a day with Jack and Henry, oh. another one where we just, everybody <laughs> had more fun playing yeah. and laughing. And, <laughs> and that's just a joy. Particularly loved. I mean, you know, we had, we had directors. I was crazy about Gideon Raff who directed mm. um, Six Nine. I, I thought he was spectacular. I think my, my favorite, not scene, but my favorite moment from um, Erica was the moment when Taylor walks away. She has that brief moment where she seems like she's going to break down and then she kind of just like stiff off her lip, like fixes her jacket and just gets on uh-huh. with it. I really uh-huh. love that scene. That that moment was like a really good moment for me. Um, we've also got Greg Grumberg coming to London next week. So this weekend. So hopefully I'll try and grab a grab an interview with him sometime at a convention. Oh my God. Well, he is. I mean, he will just he is one of the funniest men, yeah. you know, he'll just he'll just have you laughing. Yeah. He's 
so lovely and so hilarious. And and how about Henry? Everyone, we, we always ask everyone about Henry because we we absolutely loved him and his dynamic with um, Aislinn as well. But we we dubbed them the the Frady Cats. Yes, so terrific. And we look, everybody loves Henry. <laughs> Henry's so funny. He's so game. He's so you know. He's just terrific. Look, it was a terrific cast. I yeah. loved our cast. I really, really did. Yeah. I think Henry's in L.A. this week and leaves tomorrow, and I'm so disappointed that I'm in Vancouver uh-huh. missing him. But it was really, you know, I mean, every once in a while, you yeah. just have the blessing of a really great group. You know, and we're a very different, eclectic group. Everybody kind of comes from different worlds in the world of acting, Um you know, I mean, you have Jack, who's been a, you know, a, 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 a true journeyman, you know, actor forever. Uh, you know, you have Henry, who comes from the world of improv and uh, a far looser, you know, crazy <laughs> place and background yeah. than, you know, than us. Um, you know, it's just a really great mixed group. And everybody, when everybody brings different things and everybody comes at things, yeah. you know, differently, I think Eve and I are both pretty serious. So we come at our work in a, in a constantly in class and studying and working on stuff. And, you know, it's just, it's, yeah. everybody has their, their own. It's great. Um, it seems that way, like from all the, all the photos and the behind the scenes stuff, it seemed like you guys were always having a good time. And we know there was a lot of karaoke sessions and and, oh the, my God. and the like. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, Toru, Toru is a karaoke fanatic. <laughs> and Eve will boldly, I'm a horrible, horrible singer. So um, I would, ha- I happily do karaoke when they're all doing karaoke. And I just yeah. hold my cocktail straw for a drink <laughs> and uh, pretend to sing in that because, you know. That's yeah. fair enough. No- nobody needs to hear me <laughs> singing. So, this is uh, just a personal question from me. So, yeah. because of um, Erica's quote unquote powers of persuasions, it was always kind of difficult for me to kind of figure out her ultimate motivation. Um, there was, I thought there was, there was three main kind of um, reasons why she was doing what she was doing. And to me, it was because she hated Evos. She wanted to save humanity and just humanity. Or was it because, like, solely just because of Taylor? Do you have any insight? Well, you've obviously got insight into that, so. Well, I I think that Erica really felt like she was making choices for the better good of humanity and mm. and the the existence of the world. Mm. I mean, I really think that she believed deep down that whatever horrible choices she had to make and whatever numbers of people had to die in order to guarantee that we're not just saving the world for another 150 years, Mm -hmm. but we are rebuilding a world that will now be sustainable and be able to live beyond. Mm -hmm. That, I think, enabled her to have the kind of myopia (laughs) that she could skip over the reality Mm -hmm. and the fact of, you know, killing this many people and how bad that is. And, Mm -hmm. And I think... I think it was not because of Taylor. Okay. I think that she wanted Taylor to come with her and to be on this journey with her. But, but I think some of the choices she made were not, you know, which is, you know, which were not the choices I have made as a, (laughs) as a mother, you know, she did not make them for her daughter first. Okay. And also one more thing, getting into the, into Erica's head, if the plan had succeeded and humanity was saved would Erica still have Harris Prime next to her as a right hand man? All right. Well, first of all, the plan didn't succeed. <laughs> I know. Oh, damn! <laughs> Wouldn't you have Harris next to you as your right hand man all the time? Definitely. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Clay <laughs> we, and I regularly joked about what was really going on between Erica and Harris. <laughs> we have this. Um, we've had this not running gag, but we've had this this idea um, that we would kind of want to pitch to whoever we can but heroes all the auxiliary content that you have you've got the graphic novels the ebooks the games there's one thing that they haven't covered and that's audio drama and i think with you and and harris or clay clay doing an audio drama i think would be awesome because of just that silky smooth voice and then we could get to know and then and then he sings can you have you oh, have you heard singing no Oh my God, look him up on YouTube or I don't know where it is, but the man sings and has a beautiful voice. Oh, yeah. yeah, Awesome. I'm just telling you. (laughs) So yeah, we're going to pitch that to whoever we we, we can, but yeah, (laughs) it's going to be, I think it would be great just to like, because I think there's a really interesting backstory there between the two of them. And you obviously have your, 
your version. We're not going to ask you. We can keep that just in case. Okay, we we hang on to that. Um, (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, that was one of the, you know, we never, uh, Erica never learns or you never see her learn about Clay, Mm. about Harris's death, you know, and he did everything for her. Yeah. I did, I will say, I did not mean to leave Clay out of that. I loved working with Clay. Mm. He and I had a blast together. Do you think um, Uh, Erica would have let the tears flow, unlike with Taylor? I don't know. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) I don't know. I don't think she's much of a, she's not much of a teary woman, but uh, not much of a crier. Okay. Uh, But there would have been a moment and a crack. Okay. For sure. Awesome. So, um, yeah, I think we've taken up more than enough of your time. So um, is there anything you'd like to plug, whether it be your Twitter or Facebook or any projects you have upcoming? No, I'm not much of a big plugger, but, um, but no, and thank you. And this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. So I'd like to thank you, Ria, for taking the time for coming on and having this interview. And I hope you guys found the interview entertaining and informative. And until then, download the podcast, Save the World. Download the podcast, Save the World. <laughs> <laughs>